click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of Machine Design 1. We are right now learning about the design of different shafts. In the last lecture, we have seen the numerical based on the design of power transmission shaft. Let us move ahead with the numerical number 2 which is associated with power transmission shaft. So students, as you can see on your screen, there is a problem statement given and that says we need to design a power transmission shaft. In this case, this particular thing is the shaft which has been associated with two bearings and there are two discs. These two discs are nothing but your pulleys on which the belts are mounted. We also have been given that the position of these belts is vertically downward. So all of them are acting vertically downward. So in short, the loads acting on the shaft are all in downward direction. Plus, if the weights of these pulleys are considered, then those weights should also act vertically downward. The next thing, they have already calculated the reactions and forces associated with these particular things and we have been given the diagram. We need to figure out some of them, but let us look at the data. They have said A and B are bearings. Power transmission should be of 7.5 kilowatt. The Rotational speed we have been given is 360 rpm. Of course, this rotation speed is of the shaft. Then the diameter of the first pulley, the larger pulley of course, which is pulley number 2, has been given 500 millimeter. And the diameter of this for this smaller pulley is given to 50 millimeter. We have been given the weights of pulleys also. It's 10 kg and 30 kg respectively. We have been given that the ratio between the maximum tension and minimum tension on the respective pulley should be 2.5. For example, if I consider pulley number 1, the tension between T1 and T2, the ratio will be 2.5. If I consider pulley number 2, T3 divided by T4 will be 2.5. The next thing they have given is the material properties. So they have not specified the material, instead they have given the properties associated with the material. 380 Newton per millimeter square is the yield strength and factor of safety should be 3. With this data, let us proceed ahead for the design of shaft. Friends, when we design the shaft, it is important to design its diameter. And of course, we need to consider the failure theories also. In addition, they have given the rigidity constant also. This is the modulus of rigidity associated with the material of shaft. Ahead of which they say that the twisting should not be greater than 0.5 degree in the shaft. So in short, we need to design the shaft not only for its bending, not only for torsion, but also its rigidity. We need to find the diameter. That's our problem statement. We already have written down the given data. Let us look at the allowable values. And therefore, since we know that sigma y is equal to 380 Newton per millimeter square, the allowable value of stress will be equal to, of course, the material is ductile becomes 380 divided by factor of safety, which has been given 3. The answer comes out to be also the shear stress. We know that the relation between them. Now, students, you need to understand that we are solving this by method of ductile material. If the ASME code is given, we have to use some other formula, which was explained to you during the formula session. And it becomes half of this value exactly. So these are the value allowable in the given material. The next thing is very important that is the torque. The torque is associated with this particular formula. We have been given the power. We have been given the RPM. We can find out the torque. Of course, it's the rotational torque. The power we have been given is 7.5 kilowatt. The rotational speed that we have is 360 rpm. And hence, the torque to be transmitted becomes Newton millimeter. So for this particular torque, we need to go for the design. There comes the next thing, tensions in the given belt. Now we know that there are two pulleys, so there are two belts. And that's why the tension between them will vary slightly. The only thing common is one of the tensions will be tight side tension, another tension will be slack side tension. It's a very well known formula. That's the difference between the tensions into the radius that is diameter by 2 becomes the torque transmitted. We have been given torque transmitted and we know the tensions or the ratio between them. 
of which we know that tension 1 is exactly equal to 2.5 times the tension 2 and therefore substituting the tension 1 value will get upon solving I'll get so the tension 2 comes out to be this much and substituting back will get this value so these are the respective tensions in the pulley number 1 belt and hence the total downward force on pulley number 1 becomes it's basically tension 1 plus tension 2 plus the weight of the pulley and therefore it becomes let us say force 1 because it's a pulley 1 we are considering the tension 1 is 2652.8 plus 1061.26 plus the weight of the pulley we have been given 10 kilogram so it becomes Newton and hence the total downward force comes out to be of course on pulley 1 somewhere around this value so this is the final value of force acting on the first pulley in the next session we will be doing at the design part of the shaft Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.